trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, folks, so this is the chart of gold going back to uh, 2005. The bottom was made uh, during this cycle uh, at 2000, excuse me, in 1995 when we hit uh, $246 an ounce. Um, and from there, it's gone straight up. So that, stop and think that was 1995. So we've been going up for 29 years in this move. But let's start from the very beginning. I did a whole report on this, folks. Over the weekend, I spent probably five hours going through everything. And I said, well, I'm going to send this out to everybody. And at the very last minute, I said, nope, I'm not going to do it. And the reason why is I don't need the extra pressure. So I'm just going to walk through what I was watching. Gold started trading freely back in 1973 or 4, I can't remember, I think it was 74 exactly, when the COMEX came out. Um, they took it off the gold standard on August 31st of 1971. That was the beginning of the breaking up of the Bretton Woods Agreement, and then the next year it was officially broken up, and gold was allowed to be traded freely, first time since 1935. Of course, it had gone from $35 an ounce up to about $80 an ounce. From $80 an ounce in 1974, it went up to January the 20th of 1980, where it traded at 875, it went up eight times in value, 800 percent. From that level, on August, on the 20th of January 1980, the market went all the way down 15 years, okay, into night into 1995. That's when it finally made its bottom at 246. And then the market started a very very strong run, and it made its first run into new high ground. Uh, early in 2007, when it hit uh, almost $1,000 an ounce, then it backed off a little bit, and then it had a meteoric rise where it went up to $1,911 an ounce. And that was in August of 2011. I was in Hong Kong at that time, and uh, I was invited to write a paper for the uh, South China Seas saying that I thought there was a major top in the gold market and it was right on and then the market went down for five years stopping exactly almost exactly with a three drive to a bottom pattern here at this level there was a, on December of 2016 and then from then we went all the way up into uh, 2021 then we backed off with a big ABCD pattern that ended in 2023 and now you can see the gigantic move that we've had up here to 2,617 uh, so far and still rising. Now, I was uh, expecting a top to come in sometime today. Those of you that get the newsletter, you'll see that the beautiful 135 pattern that we had in silver stopped exactly at the exact price of, uh, well, within, within one penny and dropped 44 cents. It's still quite a bit below that. Platinum, which is the weakest, which I always suggest to sell the weakest of the three metals, broke very, very badly. It was down $20 at one time. I have no idea uh, where it is right now. But I believe when you look at this chart, it was done by a good friend, Teresa West, and it shows the, the time harmonics that are in here. And But this mainly what I'm looking at is the major A, B, C, D pattern that's completing up into this level. Now, remember, this was the biggest run right here on a dollar basis. Basis, folks, because we went, we went from 240 up to 119, uh, 1900. Then we backed off, and since that time we've gone from 1,000. We're only up to 2600. I thought gold would be at 3500. Maybe it'd be at 3500 after this, the uh, Fed speaks on Wednesday, uh, Tuesday or Wednesday. But who knows? But anyway, that's what that's what I'm looking at as I'm watching these uh, things unfold. And I I follow the patterns. And gold is all of these patterns are pretty much the same. But gold and crude oil and stocks 
and bonds are about as good as you can possibly get. Folks, there is something big out there. I don't know what it is, but when I did all my work this weekend, and it was a lot of work, and what I was going to do just for kicks and giggles, I was going to start a little tiny service saying, look, we're going to get ready to start selling gold up here, and we are going to... Uh, uh, we're going to, going to make a donation. You don't have to pay me any money, but you make a donation if it's right for the first $200. In other words, it would be basically a free donation to do that. And I said, well, I really don't need that extra pressure, even though um, you know there's no money involved or anything. I said, ah, it's just not worth it, so I, I'm not going to do that. Anyway, this is what we're watching here in the gold market. But the thing that is the biggest market of all, of course, which I just posted, which was the natural, the um, uh, stop it, Larry, um, was the Treasury notes and also the Treasury bonds. I'm a little flustered, folks, because about, must have been about 6.30 this morning, my, my computer froze up, and I mean it froze up to the point that, I mean, I couldn't do anything, so I had to call Kenny the Geek over here on an emergency run, which he doesn't like to do, and he charges an arm and a leg, but I need an arm and a leg, so he came over, and he worked on it for about an hour and a half, he couldn't do anything, and he says, well, I think it's broken. So I picked it up, and I just, about three inches off the ground, uh, off the desk, and I just dropped it, and boom, everything started to work. And I looked over at him and said, how much do I charge you for that on Kenny? <laughs> anyway, we joked about it, but I don't know why it worked. Maybe it'll stop working in a few minutes, but this is what's happened uh, with this. Anyway, that's what we're watching uh, in the gold market. So the things that I want to, to try to show you is when I'm doing these patterns, they don't always work. Now, this is the one we were looking at in platinum. Now, platinum dropped you know, well over $25 an ounce from this 135 pattern that we had here. And if you looked at the silver market, if you'll just get this one up here, you'll be able to see there was silver. There was the high of the day in silver was at uh, 31.43. Um, the high was uh, 31.46 at the exact 7.86. And it's trading uh, trading right, right where it is right now, 31.06. It's down 40 cents. Now, whether that means anything or not, I don't know. But that's what the pattern is telling us right now uh, in the silver market. So those are just a few of the things. The other one that I was watching, up, oh, shut the front door and raise the rent. Something went haywire. We were watching the uh, stock market because we are very, very close. Let me get this up here. This is what we were looking for in the, uh, this is the December, okay? This is the December contract of the YM, but unfortunately what it is, it is, you know, continuation. So there was the high. I think the high was right up here. At around 42 and change today, it's trading up quite a bit lower. But the problem is they're rolling it over, and that's not the same thing. Because when you roll it over, it's barely made a new high. But it did make a new high. And here we over all of this really strong astro stuff that Norm will be talking about here in a little bit. And whether that works or not, you know, I don't know. But we, I think something really big is happening. When you see uh, major markets like the crude oil making a major bottom, gold silver and platinum all making you know some type of real negative patterns uh, stocks making you know three drive pattern uh, and but these these are things that uh, you got to pay attention to if you're pattern recognition trader so let's take a little break here we'll get back we'll talk about a few other things and especially we'll be right back Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, Education. Educating investors. 
The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Um, Dow Jones. Now we switched over basically today. Uh, well, the big switching started, and believe me, it's a lot of stuff to roll over. But today is the first day that you trade the nearby contract, which is now the December in the Dow, the S and P, the Nasdaq, and the uh, E mini S and P. So anyway, this is where we are. You can see here. Um, you, you can see the A B C D pattern that lined up right here. But if we take this and put on an hourly chart. This is why I wanted to get up here to show you. There's the, You made a new high. You see, this is the old high that we made way back here on September the 2nd. We took that out today. Now, I, su I suggested in the newsletter, I said there's a high probability that we're going to do that. And all I was doing was I was looking at this ABCD pattern right here. There's your AB, there's your CD, and it measured right up there to 42, right on there, 40, uh, 4, uh, 4,200, and the high was 4,162. Uh, and right now what we're doing is, if you're watching it real closely, and we are, let's just get up here because we're just about ready to hit there. There's your 382 is coming in here very, very shortly, and you'll see if that's going to work for today. But this would be one that I'd really look interesting at because we're going to have a nice little Gartley at that point and uh, we're going to see what happens at that spot. Now, this is uh, intraday trading, which sometimes can be a little tricky, but selling it there, you're making an ABCD, and your stop would have to be right above here, right around risking about $500. But that's what you're looking at is when you're watching some of these things here unfold. It's like we're doing today. But I, I tell you, when I looked at all these charts, and I spent a great deal of time, you know, I don't play golf, and I don't watch football, so... You know, playing with these markets and trying to tr interpret where they're going. When I saw all of those major markets, the bonds, the Dow Jones, the, Dow, the, the bond stocks, and gold all lined up with major, major ABCD patterns. I mean, major ones. I said, oh dear. I said, this is something that is going to be, whether it happens or not, I don't know. But in fact, if it does, you know, we'll have to wait and see. Now, let's take a look here as you're watching here on the S&P here. And let me c correct this with the uh, refresh this for today. Hopefully, we'll be able to do it. Nope, it's not going to refresh yet, but we've got enough to look at. You can see we're already above the 382 on the intraday on the uh, on the S&P. 
So the Dow right now is the weaker of the group, but as you can see here, on a short-term basis, and this would be one that you'd want to be watching, there's your X, A, B, C, D, and that'll take you right up to your 61% retracement up here within about cent, four cents of where we're trading right now. There it is uh, at 89, so you'd be watching it right about 89. That's three cents for where it is, and your stop would have to be uh, right above here. So that's what we uh, are paying attention to. Remember, uh, this uh, this made, let me see, this this made a new high too. Let's just double check. Hold on just a second. Well, I don't have all the data because, hold, you know what I can do? Yes, I can get it. We'll just go to the daily on this, and that'll tell us whether we took out the high, and we did not. We did not make a new high. That came in at uh, 57.21, uh, and the high that we made last week was 57.20, so that didn't even make a new a new high intraday. So that's that's another big one that's interesting. In other words, we made a new high in the Dow Jones, and I need to check the really important one, which is the cash S&P, because we were so close. I didn't know how it could not make that, especially on the opening, but let's just look at it. This is all new to me, folks, because I haven't been on the air for well over three hours because I had no computer. So let's just take a look at this on an hourly basis and see if we made a new high. Nope, we did not. Here's where we are. So far today, we got up to this level. There was our high back here, so we have not quite done that as of yet. And you can see here, it's been a big run here. And so we're going to find out what happens here these next few days. These next two days, I believe, Tuesday and Wednesday, are going to be the probably two of the most volatile days that we'll see um, in the market for the rest of the year. Uh, I say that because people get emotionally attached to what Mr. Powell says, whether it's true or not. And, you know, I'm not trying to say it is or isn't. All I'm saying, it's very volatile around those times, and that's why you want to be extremely careful. If this market is, in fact, going to have a move down, it's going to give you every opportunity in the world, and I mean in the world, to get short, believe me, because, you know... You've had everybody in the world buying this, okay? I mean, they're, they're, everybody's going to be looking for value, just like they did here when it topped, or here when it topped, they're going to be looking for value, so there'll be plenty of chances to sell it short. So that's why I'm trying to be, you know, as patient as possible as I watch these things unfold. Now, I wanted to spend just one second or two here with the U.S. dollar index, because uh, we have some real important levels that we're dancing with this morning. I don't know if they held or not. They were certainly supposed to, and they do. Oh, they came real close. Let me get the daily up here. I think we did. Hold on just a second. Should have tagged the uh, even money level just to heart. Oh, this is not good. Hold on. There's where, yes, we did. Good, 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 good. This is what I wanted to see. We did break below the lows we made back here on Christmas Eve, way back here. All right? That was when we broke it, and now we've made new lows right here. And as you can see, as you're watching this, you're seeing the ABCD market come down. We've already bounced a little bit off the bottom. Now, if this is making a low, what we need to do is to take a quick look at the euro, which we usually do. And we're going to bring that up here in just one second, and we'll have it ready to go. And there's the euro, and we got to get it up on the daily also because it's going to be going up. And it should be right there. And by golly, there's the old 618 staring it right in the face. Let's just move this over around a little bit. So there's where we are. Blow it up. Now all I'm going to do is clean this out to make sure we're looking at everything the same way. This is what we're watching. It's just like the dollar index has gone back. Let's just um, let's just see if we went go back here and see if we've taken. Oh, I've got to do the weekly. Hold on. I want to see if we've taken out the weekly number. In the uh, that was back in December of uh, back here, uh, December of last year would have been right. To, yes, we did. Now the euro did take this out. Okay, so we're going to be uh, seeing if it's going to have legs here or not. But as we go back to this daily chart, here's where we are. Okay, now you can see now we've got a one three five pattern forming right now, and uh, we'll just draw it in to see how close it's going to be. There's our high right here. There's there's point three right here, almost uh, at the seven eight six, and then we've got the other one coming in here. This looks like it's going to be right at the seven eight six. No, it's it's at the and little it's a little above it, so it still has some possible room to go. But this is why we we got this on the watch list right here because if that dollar index uh, fails like that, uh, boy, that could be a really big uh, 
really big move in a lot of different things because that means that people are moving away from the U.S. dollar, and that's not going to be good for Treasury bonds, folks, and Treasury notes. And that's where the patterns will be the most uh, prominent, and I think they'll be happening here in the next two days. I believe we have a break coming up here in just about 45 seconds. I wanted to cover the Japanese yen because, uh, as I saw earlier this morning, it was still going lower, which we had thought that, oh, it's, someone's taking it off the board here. Dog on it. Uh, shucks, I had to put it back in. And, uh, we'll be back, folks, with Norm Winsky. Okay. Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archive live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. This portion of Trade What You See is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Okay, folks, without further ado, we have Mr. Duhut himself all the time, every day, Mr. Norm Winsky of Astro Trends. Welcome, Norman. 
Thank you very much, Larry. Thanks for having me on your show. Well, you always give us good stuff, so tell us what you're looking at today. Okay, I was last on your show uh, the last week of August, right around the middle of the week there. And so I gave the following forecast. We had four points. We had uh, the first one we're going to talk about is on the night of August 28th, AC is after the close. Mercury in the sign of Leo turned direct. You, Many of your folks have heard about Mercury retrograde, but uh, there's the opposite point. When Mercury stops going retrograde, that's, it looks like it's going backwards from the point of view of the Earth. We know it really doesn't do that if you were to look down the solar system, but based on royalty motion, it looks like it's going backwards. And then it stopped doing that the night of 28th and stopped to go what's called direct, which is forward. So we had a change in trend in Mercury. The time we have a change in trend in Mercury, we'll look at the grains, and because it's in the sign of Leo, that's the sign for gold. So we'll be looking at that in a minute, and then also we, that, and then we went to the uh, Labor Day weekend. We had three important events over the Labor Day weekend. We had the planet Uranus in the sign of Taurus, the bull, turn retrograde. We'll be looking at calo cotton, copper, and cotton. And then uh, we also had Pluto, which was already retrograde, was backing up from, uh, previously it had gone forward into the sign of Aquarius. It was backing up and changing signs back into Capricorn over the Labor Day weekend. And then we also had a new moon in the sign of Virgo. Anytime we have a new moon, we're going to look at financials, grains, precious metals, oil. And in this case, because it was in Virgo, we were emphasizing soybeans. All right, so here's the first chart. Here's corn on our point here for the Mercury Direct. There's a nice pullback low in the corn. And then we rallied into the Labor Day weekend. And when you came back on the opening for on Tuesday the 3rd, uh, the market is uh, not good. market kept going higher. So that's a miss. So we went 50-50 on corn. Here's soybeans. Also had the pullback low on Mercury Direct. Uh, we were emphasizing, uh, sort of featuring soybeans. And so not only do we get uh, uh, a miss there for the new moon, but we gave it uh, double points. So we get two misses there for soybeans for the moon. All right, here's wheat. Wheat that was not being helpful. It didn't care about mercury going direct or the moon. So there's two points against me there. Uh, but here's cattle. Cattle, we had the... Uh, Oh, yeah, Uranus and Taurus uh, retrograde, and that was right ahead of that top there. It went, went about a handle against it before it dropped about eight, uh, about five or six handles. There you go. Here's cotton right on the high there, and then down, 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 so that was good. Uh, cocoa was going sideways, as you can see, into our window there for over the uh, Labor Day weekend. Uh, here's coffee pulling back into the Labor Day weekend, and you had a bit of a rise there, and it doesn't look very big, but in fact, I think that's about eight handles from the low to the high, and I think that's about $3,000. 4000 What's that again? It's 4000 Norm. 4000 Oh, thank yes, you, Larry. And uh, that'll, buy you, that'll buy you some a, a few cups, at, a couple of cups at Starbucks, I guess, right? Uh, <laughs> here's hogs. And right on the top there for the hogs on the Labor Day weekend with the Pluto uh, change in sign. And down, down, down. And copper was going sideways. So we, on our two points there for copper, so we do nothing there. Hill silver, silver got the right date. But if you trade it on the opening, like I usually uh, recommend for overnight stuff, you know, we were over the weekend there with the new moon. Uh, you were too early, and you had a big draw down there, so that's not good. So that count that as a miss. Gold was a little friendlier, so you had a nice pullback low there. Our Mercury direct into in the sign of Leo, the sign for gold. So you see had a nice pop up there, and then also another a nice little pop up there. Uh, oh wait, no, this is a buy. That's a buy there. Sorry, that's a buy. We were coming down, and you would have bought there. It did go about thirty dollars against you, which was a lot better than the silver. Silver went about a buck and a half, which was a lot more money. And then you can see you had a nice rally there from that low. That was actually uh, near the low of the month. 
Uh, here's the crude oil, and that's a miss. It kept going down. S&P was really good. We rallied into the Labor Day weekend, and we had three points, three cycle points, over the Labor, Labor Day weekend. So that's three points to our favor there, well, if you sold there on the opening. And it was a huge down. I think we dropped about, from here to here, about 200 handles. And if you were really brave and had big money, you could have sold maybe sold three contracts there on those three points. And I think that would be, let's see, about two, ten, about 30 grand. I think that's about $30,000. Mm -hmm. Here's T-Bonds pulling down into the our points there over the Labor Day weekend. We had two of those for the bonds and then up, up, and away. That was really good there. And the dollar is making a top there on on the moon. And the British pound will make a low there on the moon. And the euro is making a low right there on the moon. And the Japanese yen also making a low on the moon. And, oh, we got one more. And the Swiss franc making a low there on the moon, too. So if we add them all up, add the green arrows and the red arrows, you got 18 winners, 7 misses out of 25 for the 72%. Now, Larry, I'm going to do something I haven't done for many, many moons on your show. I'm going to talk about day trading. Oh, my gosh. So, uh, as you know, Larry, I send, I, I do, send out a whole month at a time, all the t intraday times. Every day has its own page. Here's for Friday the 13th. How much time do we have, Larry? You just don't good? worry about that. Well, when I'll tell you, okay. we'll, I'll tell you what we've got uh, a minute and twenty seconds here, but we'll give you more time. So just keep going. We've got okay, very good. So you know, so get these times. These times there, there's divided. In, the computer spits them out by the type of uh, event they are. We have this is G here for geocentric. That's from the point of view of the Earth. H is for heliocentric. That's a heliocentric from the point of view of the Sun. And we also do the U.S. A natal chart that's based on where the planets were on July the 4th, 1776. Now, you notice I've highlighted two of these times because we actually had a trade signal in. Uh, the others are were all passes. Why were they passes? Because they didn't have a proper price set up, and I'll show you that here in just a moment. So, we're going to go to the chart now. Our two times are 1024 and 208. These are all in Eastern time now. Okay, Norm, we've got to pay a few bills. Stay with us. This looks like a good stuff. This is good. I, I'm interested in this, and I think others are too, so let's stay with it. <coughs> Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So, ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. The stock market is a delicate, interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. 
Follow along with Tom Daly as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Okay, we're back, folks, speaking with Norm Winsky. Please continue, Norm. We've got eight minutes, so fire away. Great. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, when we left, I was showing you this page with these astrological times for Friday the 13th. And we have these different times here. For example, this number 2, 101 p.m., it says the moon is 120 degrees to the sun at that time. Now, you, you'll see what uh, you need to, You need is several factors. You have to have the right time. And then if you have the right time, the market has to set up right. I'll show you what, the, what that is. And then I also use a trailing stop, which, which is uh, based on a formula tied to the VIX, okay? So I'm going to show you what a good setup is. And then these others did not have a good setup, so you take a pass, you do nothing. And one of the great things about the system are you don't have to stare at the screen all day long. All you have to do is show up a few minutes before these times and look to see how the market's setting up if you have a good setup. Also, one more thing uh, in the rules is that if we do have a good setup, we need to have three bars going in one direction, up or down. And if you do have that, then you need to have the, the market closing near the extreme. In other words, if we're going up, we want to be uh, selling near the top third of the bar. And if you're going down, you want to be buying in the bottom third of the, that bar. All right, now I'm gonna, we have two times, 10.24 and 2.08. I will show you the charts on what happened on Friday. First, we'll look at 10.24. Here you go. Now, here's 10.24 right here. We looked at the trade on the close of that bar. And so you see one, two, three bars up. We're right near the high of the bar. So you would have gone short there. It went about a handle against you of the next bar. And then down, 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 down. And if you just let the, the system uh, take, do it, do its thing. In other words, you're going to wait maybe for the trailing stop to kick you out. Uh, then you'd be two handles off the low here at 83.75. And so you made 10.75. In four minutes not too bad right and here we go here's the second time here we got uh, oh 208 right there and again look at this uh, one two three four bars up now and you're right near the eye of the bar and that, that was about zero heat I don't think that will hardly went against you at all and then down and then if you waited for the trailing stop to kick you out uh, then you were out for about four and three quarters in five minutes. So total was uh, 15 handles on two trades. And uh, uh, the other was, did not have the uh, requirements for a single to do a trade, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's it. Any questions, Larry? Anybody from the from the tiger stand there? 
No, I can see that. What, what people don't seem to really grasp, uh, Norman, is that J.P. Morgan had a full-time astrologer, Evangeline Adams, and I believe you bought her uh, library, didn't you? I she own her library. Her. That's Evangeline yeah. Adams. Yes, that's correct. Now, as, have you ever gone to uh, the J.P. Morgan Museum there off of 42nd Street in New York? Yeah, I did go there one time, and I talked to somebody there, and, yeah. and I thought, well, maybe that would be uh, the right place for the library to have a home. But they didn't <laughs> and the, and the, so the, the ceiling of that library is a celestial reproduction of what the um, the sky looks like. And, and under his birthday, which was April the 17th, was a yep. secret door that came from his living quarters into the library. It was a little elevator, and that's where it opened up into that level. So, yep, he had I, a zodiac I, ceiling, yes, and sure the did, yes. main door yeah. was under Aries, and uh, supposedly yeah. his mistress... She was a Libra, and oh. uh, they, had, they had her door on the opposite side of the room there yeah. under Libra. Don't know anything about that. Don't want to even talk about it, okay? <laughs> okay. Next thing I know, I'll be getting things from the ACLU. Mr. Morgan Given. belonged to a secret dinner club for the very wealthy. It was called the Astro, something like the Astro Club or something like that. Oh, my and they were all, I wasn't aware of that. They, yeah. were, they were all into astrology. Yeah. He has the greatest collection of, 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 of original Bibles in the world in that uh, library there at the, at the museum. It's even bigger than the one in the Smithsonian, from what they say. But, you know, I don't know too much about that. But he had a strong affinity for the Bibles, too. So let's okay. continue on with the astrology stuff. Uh, uh, you know, I'd like to hear more about this. I have a question from one of our listeners, Norm. We okay. have a t tomorrow, uh, tomorrow we have a lunar eclipse with perigee. Okay, which is very important. Has anybody ever done the studies? I know when you have a, 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 an eclipse uh, with perigee or without perigee, has anybody ever looked to see when you have a, a lunar eclipse at perigee or apogee if the cycle is more accurate well, at that time? The problem is with those, they don't happen very often, but I've done studies on the full moon at perigee, and that works about 75% of the time for about a 1 and 3 quarter percent decline in the major indices. Okay. Within one okay. day. Within one day. Okay, now we have a lunar eclipse, which That's is a full moon. That's the next thing I'm yeah. going to okay. talk about. Okay. Well, let's go ahead. Take your head. Go ahead. Next I'll shut up. I'll list here. What's that again? I'll shut up. Go ahead. So, okay. So, uh, so here we go. Here's what's coming up here in the next few days. Uh, Tuesday night, 9-17 after the close of AC, we have a full moon. Lunar eclipse, the lunar eclipse is a special kind of full moon, and it'll also be at perigee. You got three lunar cycles all converging there, and it's that's uh, very rare. And uh, so we want to be watching financials, grain, precious metals, and oil. Okay, let's see, the full moon will be in the sign of Pisces, so that's a, a, a extra emphasis on oil. Then the night of the 19th. We have Neptune, which is the planet for oil, uh, at perigee, and that's also oil. So uh, something big could be happening here on the next few days in the oil market, okay? Mm -hmm. So here's me. I've been doing this about 50 years now, and I'm a former Chicago floor trader. I was on the CBOE and the Chicago Board of Trade over a 12-year period there in the 70s and the 80s, and uh, survived that. I saw a lot of people come and go. Uh, when I first got there, it was about a one-third turnover. Is that what you saw, Larry? A lot of people going broke. Uh, oh yes, always because a lot of them had no, you know, no idea of what was going on in the markets, including me. I'd raise my hand any time, but no, it's not an easy business. You know, we have to learn how to do things, and if you yeah. try to take care of your errors, you're going to be okay. If you don't, you're not going to be okay. That's pretty well, most much. Most of the people down there, my observations, most of the people down there were making their living on the fact. That it's called proximity of the market. They were the market. They were right there, mm -hmm. and they could, you know, get the buy buy it on a quarter and sell it at a half, and that kind of thing, and get the get the bid offer, get the bid offer spread. Sure. But they didn't study the market very much. I'm on a I'm on a group there in Facebook for the CBOE, and almost nobody of those people that were there when I was there are trading anymore. Mm -hmm. I don't think they. I don't think they study very much. I spent all my spare time studying different methodologies: the GAN, astrology, Elliott wave, whatever I could get my hands on, Fibonacci, all that stuff. You know, and I always study. Well, that's how you learn, you know. Because remember, Norman, we started doing this together. There were very few books 
I mean, you know, now there's more books than you can stack up to the, the Empire State Building. But we started doing this business, you know, to even find a book, you know, it was tough. I remember, was it 40 some years ago, we were trying to find Diego Columbus book. Remember that one? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and that was uh, that was supposed to be for $25,000. And it was, what, 17 pages? Yeah, yeah, that's Jerry Bob. Like that. right? Yeah, that's correct. Hey, listen, thanks for joining us, Norman. Hey, we'll have you on again. Let me get my contact oh. info out here. We're looking at it so far away. Okay, I'm in beautiful Naples, Florida. You can call me 239 594 3939. You can email me at nwinski at yahoo.com or you can Skype me at that same address. Thank you very much, Larry. I'll be happy to talk to the people. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Okay, folks, might as well have a little fun here. This is the Treasury bond. This is the hourly chart of the new of the December bonds. We've been trading those for quite some time now. You can see here we've had a major, uh, been moving higher. All I'm going to do now is I'm going to do it the easy way. I'll put this in. You'll be able to see the there was the 1.27. And then what you're going to be looking at now is an ABCD coming in here sometime when the Fed is out here uh, banging on the door. And that's going to get us up here to this level pretty close to 128. Okay, now if we get there, that's going to be a full point higher. All right, now we'll just look at it right here. There would be drive one right here. That was back on the 6th. And you had one here, and you'll be coming in. There's where I think we're going to be. The problem is, is when you look at this on the long-term weekly, not just a point away, these are so volatile during the Fed time, which not a good time. Let's just bring this up here. 
on the weekly so we can take a quick look at it. Um, you know what? You have to do it with the continuation chart. Let's just stick with what we've got here, okay? Get that hourly chart back there so we can take a look at it. And I think that's probably where it's going to get to. Now, the way to handle that when the Fed is out there, when it gets to this level here, don't have an order setting there, folks. And the reason why is this thing could easily go two or three points higher just from the emotionalism and say, oh, my God, interest rates are dropping. You know, bonds are going to be, you know, going, uh, you know, straight uh, straight uh, up. And, and, and uh, let me tell you, history says that's not the case. You just go back and look at all the times when they start dropping interest rates. When they're dropping interest rates, it means the business is not as good as they thought it was. You know, it's basically stocks go up on earnings, not on interest rates. Anyway. Thank you for joining us, folks. Uh, we'll see you on the flip side tomorrow. Our guest will be Jeff Huge of uh, Alpha Insights. And uh, live every day in an attitude of gratitude. Uh, and may God bless. And we'll see you on the flip side tomorrow. I hope I don't have any time left. I bet I do, do I? Oh, no, I did it right. Yay. <laughs> <laughs>